When Michael Callahan was a teenager and sick in bed with bronchitis, he had an epiphany. I came upon a story of Morley's and read it, and it surprised me. I can remember putting the book down at the end of the story because it was a moving story and thinking, my God, that's as good as any of the stories that are in this book. It's astonishing, and it was a story in which, you know, the writer had obviously seen into the privacy of a heart. And I thought, my God, that's my, my dad. You know, he's a magician. He can see. He knows everything. <laughs> it was almost like a scary moment. Throughout the 1940s, Callahan never stopped writing short stories, magazine articles, even a book for young adults. In 1951, he published his ninth novel, The Loved and the Lost, set against the wild nightlife of Montreal. This time, Callahan took aim at the touchy issue of race. His heroine slept with black jazz musicians. She was feared and reviled, yet loved by one man who could not save her. Everyone he knew wanted to destroy her. They had resented her. He knew their resentment meant trouble, and he could feel it coming as you listen in the dark and hear someone creeping after you. His own faith, he said, couldn't be broken by his friend, nor by the appearance of things, or the fact that she courted destruction. Callahan received the Governor General's Award for the Loved and the Lost, but the reviews were once again mixed. Some called it his best novel ever. <laughs> 